you very much, everybody, for watching. Actually, we were not planning to play the documentary at all because uh, I think they had to move the panel to a different time. Uh, if you can go ahead, please, and uh, one more question and I'll tie the PowerPoint. Uh, so actually, they asked me if we could play on my shirt, sure, definitely that. That was the first time that I saw a big screen as well, it actually looks pretty cool. I never narrated anything, English is not my first language, so there's some uh, pretty bad mistakes over there. But uh, for those who doesn't know me, um, uh, I've been working uh, with, uh, as a YouTuber uh, for a couple, um, for actually almost one year and a half now. Let me just wait until the presentation. So uh, I'm from Brazil. I do live in the U.S. My name is uh, Rod Ambrisi. Let me see if this uh, is working. And uh, I heard about Dash Digital Cash through another YouTuber uh, a couple couple years ago talking about how you can request funds to the network. I do have a presentation. It's about 10, 15 minutes. And then in the end, I'm going to open for questions because there's also the second part of the documentary that I just put it uh, up. Uh, on YouTube uh, last week when I went to Colombia to see uh, uh, what two million migrants are doing in Colombia from Venezuela. So uh, I do run a YouTube channel for Dash Digital Cash in Brazil. It's in Portuguese. For the past one year and a half, I've been getting paid by a bunch of computers by the Dash Digital Cash network. The main purpose of my channel is to create content and interview the topest name in crypto in the world, and of course, create uh, videos explaining how this entire ecosystem works into a specific language. So I presented a proposal to Dash, asking for uh, amount of money. Say, hey, if you guys pay me this amount of money in a couple months, I will make videos uh, for you in Portuguese or for the network. Uh, let me just talk a little bit about the governance of Dash, if you don't know what Dash Digital Cash is. Comparing to Bitcoin, Bitcoin, uh, the miner, he gets to keep 100% of the block rewards, where Dash is divided into three different layers. So the miners keep 45% of the block rewards. There's an extra layer called the master node. So if you're running a node and uh, you're in charge of doing the transactions, the private send and the instant send, you also get to keep 45% of the block reward and 10% goes to the treasury. That's actually where I come in. Uh, I presented a proposal to the treasury system where anybody in the world is allowed to present a proposal saying, hey, I need money to do a project. Dash goes on the opposite of an ICO, where an ICO, you have uh, uh, people asking for money on Dash, they have money to offer you as long as your project, of course, will bring value to the network. Dash Digital Cash Network is not a network where it's give monies uh, away, but of course, you have to create a project that brings value to the network. That's where I came in and said, hey, I'm going to create videos to a brand new market in Portuguese uh, to, for the Brazilian, actually in Portugal as well. So I want to show you the power of those 10% that every month uh, is generated automatically by the network. Uh, in Venezuela, I put it there, Venezuela and the cryptocurrency revolution, they are adopting Dash on a mass scale, which the numbers are wrong. Uh, by the time I finished editing the documentary in August, there was 600 businesses accepting Dash. Today, there's almost 3,000. It's not even one year later. It's, it's out of control. It's out of control. So, and uh, I was just in Colombia two months ago. I shot another documentary there. It's live on YouTube. Colombia, the cryptocurrency revolution. But Colombia is a specific market where they're using more as an opportunity. The economic situation of Colombia is doing better than Venezuela. In a way, there the community members create a different strategy. And of course, in Brazil, it's a totally different game. Brazil is the richest country in Latin America. Uh, um, and people, the economy never been so great in the past four or five years. We just hit all-time high in the stock market. So there's no need for business adoption in Brazil, but there's the wealth growth. There's an accumulation of wealth being uh, uh, happening, and I'm going to talk about that as well. So um, Venezuela, guys, I wasn't planning to show the documentary, so let me skip a few uh, slides here. So just a few facts. Now, today, there's over almost 5,000 business accepting Dash Digital Cash in the world. That's more than all the cryptocurrencies combined. That's something to pay attention uh, as well to this. When I was there, $1 was worth 2.5 million Bolivars. 
it got to 6 million believers, which was a stack, even more than that, I have no idea. And you can see there, how much would you pay for a roll of toilet paper? You need a stack of money, which makes you think the true use of paper, because you can choose on a matter of quantity which one you want to use for your poo-poo situation over there. And, and, and the money is actually your better option for the quantity of paper. But that's what money became once you have a, a no limit and you start printing money out of control. And, and people do not realize this is United States is in a situation worse than Venezuela with $22 trillion debt. But that's something for a different uh, subject. That's actually the slide I normally show me holding a stack of money, which I got ripped off because I gave her $1. She gave me back 75 cents. And she was supposed to give me back 99 cents plus 100,000 of a fraction for the gas. One believer, it's one liter. One dollar was 2.8 million believers. So I could fill it up 70,000 cars full tank with one dollar. Yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's insane. Um, one of the things that's happening in Venezuela, that's actually a, a problem as well. Everybody over there just prints the QR code, which exposes your balance. Uh, and that's something that we came up with a solution, which I show on the, on the documentary about Colombia called ElectroPay, where we're finalizing a POS unit under $100 that switches through QR code, so it won't review your balance as well, but we have to think about something extremely cheap, especially if we want to increase mass adoption in Colombia, Venezuela, uh, and Africa, and uh, third world countries. See, again, it's, it's, it's easy to expose your QR code. Not a lot of people know, like the, the normal user, the business, that you can scan this and know your balance and how many transactions you accept uh, at your business, which someone can say, hey, I see you have two dashes and pull a gun and ask for your funds right away. So in a matter of increasing security, we're coming up with a different solution. Uh, those are the pictures for the documentary, but let's talk about a little bit about Colombia. So I was in Colombia four times last year talking in cryptocurrency events for a thousand people at least each event, which I showed this on the documentary. But today, the exodus of Migrants from Venezuela, majority of them are going to Colombia, uh, Peru, Ecuador, Brazil, Madrid, and uh, Spain, and the United States. So Colombia used this as an opportunity, and of course, not an opportunity to make money, but an opportunity to engage with every single migrant that needs the, the means to send money back home because they're migrating to, to Colombia to, to uh, work. So Colombia today did a fantastic job accepting over 2 million refugees from an economic crisis that's happened in Venezuela. This is something to, to be very proud of it and, and, and see as, and give Colombia uh, uh, the reward of it. So this is the picture of the bridge in Cucuta, where every day there's hundreds of people trying to cross through a legal process because... They have good relationships, and Colombia has been accepting them in, in a good faith. But that's what we see every day in Cucuta, a line of people. And those people, they were not poor people. They were the middle class of Venezuela. They were the lower class and, and, the, and the middle uh, upper class from Venezuela that just became one entire class of, of uh, refugees and miserables because there's literally no more jobs or economic growth at all. And all they have is a backpack with a few clothes, their kids, a couple documents, and off they go on this uh, horrible journey. So this is what uh, the local community, and all this was organized independently. There's no one from Dash telling these people what to do. All this happens organically. The community from um, Medellin and from uh, Bogota ended up going to Cucuta, the, the city where those migrants first get in, and they start creating meetups and organizing uh, 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 conventions to tell those migrants how they can actually work in other countries and send money back to their families using uh, Dash Digital Cash. Right? This is uh, George Donnelly. He's the community leader in, uh, in, uh, in Colombia. He did a fantastic job the way he approached uh, uh, every single merchant because Colombia sits on a better economic place than Venezuela. 
So they're not using because of a desperation that they need to hold the value of their money. They use it because what he said was it's the way he approached was we have a new payment system in town. And uh, we actually, every week, we give away a couple dashes to people. They need places to spend. Would you like to get new customers? So this kind of talk actually ended up, he's from U.S., but he's been in Colombia for, I think, over 15 years as well. So this kind of talk ended up increasing the number of uh, business accepting dash from one business in January 2018 to over 300 business by this January now 2019. Uh, and those are, he's always posting on Twitter all the new business. He put up to a team that goes to visit every single merchant on every single town, uh, explaining how this magic internet money works. And in a matter of minutes, you have to talk about politics, economics, and technology. Yes, Mark? Five minutes. Thank you. So, uh, in a matter of uh, minutes, you have to explain to every single merchant about money, economics, and technology. So, it's, it's a pretty hard task, and it's a door type of, uh, of, uh, of work. You can see this on the documentary, the second version, uh, Colombia and the Cryptocurrency Revolution. About Brazil, which sits on a better location, uh, economically speaking, Brazil has today over 69 uh, uh, exchange dealing with cryptocurrency. That's what I mentioned on the documentary. We had this president that confiscated the money from everybody's savings account in 1992. He told the government, he told everybody, hey, the government's got to use your money. We got to pay you back starting 18 months. Brazil had a horrible economic collapse for 20 years. What Venezuela is going through now, I experienced this being a kid in Brazil, and I remember a little bit what my father suffered and what he had to go through. This is the type of money or how many type of bills we had in Brazil uh, in a matter of uh, 15 years with over 1.2 trillion percent uh, hyperinflation. And as I say today, in Brazil, we have no more heroes because today in the back of our bills, we have the birds, the turtle, we have the fish. We, we lost the identity with the sovereign country. And we have to deal, thank you, we have to deal with colors and play money, you know? Let's, hopefully the, the animals will save us. But this is the picture of the stock market in Brazil as well, where they took 100 years to establish their business, where in five years, those exchange, they have exchanges in Brazil, they have more users dealing cryptocurrency than the stock market managed to attract in over a hundred years. Those exchanges, the top ones, they have more users than the stock market in over a hundred years. The power of the 10% doesn't finish there. That's what the Dash Treasury allows anybody in the world to present a proposal and ask for funds. Communities in Argentina are starting to gather, especially Argentina, seems to be the next place where the economic collapse will happen. Communities in Africa are happening every day with more and more people talking about cryptocurrencies. And we can't stop this. Nobody can stop this. And this is happening in Nigeria, Nairobi, Kenya, Ghana. And every single time I see a new picture, a new Twitter that's following me, uh, my, my Twitter account that is from a country, I'm like, wow, how did they heard about this? It's all of their out there on YouTube, and, and the picture shows how they can get funds and organize meetups, uh, uh, business adoption, and marketing programs, sponsor basketball teams, and, and uh, other uh, sport teams as well. We also have a community now growing in Thailand. They just got approved with a proposal that they are getting money from the network to start talking about crypto and organizing meetups. There's a community called Dash Embassy that's in, in uh, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland as well sponsored by the Dash community. There's the Dash community in Switzerland also. And all this is due to the 10%, those 10% that is generated automatically. And there's no one behind this controlling. It's all done automatically inside the network. It goes up for voting. If the master nodes decided that your proposal has value to whatever you're trying to do and to the Dash network, they will vote yes or no. And, and, and more and more integration. Just now, a wall of coins are being accepted in, in more countries in Latin America. Integrations with uh, uh, Visa credit card payments. This is actually brand new. I just saw this last week. The marijuana industry, share master nodes, 
uh, Bitrefill and more and more wallets. There is, there's even a phone operator company that creates a hardware that those script phones, they're sold for less than $100. And they come with a Dash wallet with some Dash inside for you to start using. Today, Dash has almost 5,000 businesses being accepted. There's a new program now, a new platform called Dash Evolution for Dash Pay, which is going to turn Dash into a system uh, more friendly user like PayPal, so that's something to take a look as well. The official website is dash.org, so take a look into that. If you want to actually uh, get all the new, the latest news about Dash, dashnews.org is the, web, the official website as well. And of course, if you want to spend some Dash, you can check it out, dash, uh, discover-dash.com, where we have listed all the business that accept Dash digital cash in the world. Uh, there's the documentary about uh, Venezuela and the cryptocurrency revolution. The new one now is Colombia and the cryptocurrency revolution. It's on YouTube. Download, watch. I gave to the organizers the file in case there is space or room in the next couple of days. It's 25 minutes long. If it's available, they're going to play here as well. So stay tuned. Once again, everybody, my name is Rod Ambrisi. I'm a YouTuber for Dash Digital Cash. Thank you for your time.